just me and my guitar Hey, what's happening guys? Mark back in the workshop of Mark's Aquatics. It's part three of the Paladarium build and I've got myself lots and lots of bits over here in a box. I've got some lovely Dragonstone. I've got a nice piece of bog wood, Malaysian driftwood from my one of my other systems with some nice Abaza Tang on it, some Java Moss on it. Look at that, it's even got a little Ramzorn snail on it, which I'd better rescue. There's two of them actually. I can put them in one of my shrimp tanks. But that's going to go nice at the back, I think. We're going to put that and we're going to build up around the sides with some stone. And then we've got some various plants, some that Barry has sent me. Good as gold old Barry. This is partly his design. He sent me some plants, which is very, very nice of him. He picked them up from his garden centre. Just drop those little ram's horns into the bench tank. They'll do, uh, they'll do a world of good in there. So that was the main plan, so I can put this piece of wood in here first, I think, and use that as the main setup. Now I had to trim it off slightly so it would just fit nicely up onto the... up to the roof and underneath where I want the waterfall to come out, which is going to be there. Now, you can see it there. Now we're going to place some stones in and around here. I've added a little ramp, you can see there, so the water now is going to come from there and cascade down there. So we're going to put some rocks here, a few little plants, so it's going to be splashing all over that and then going back in and then taken back around again. Now I've left enough room for, um, for my hand so I can get around the back and take out that sponge filter to clean it out as and when we need to do it. Right, I've also got my little bottle of aquarium water there, which we can just keep spraying that down because it's going to take some time to, to aquascape this properly. So we can keep everything moist and it's not going to go, uh, it's not going to dry out on us, which is very important when we're doing plants and planting tanks. Right, now I've got that in position there. I think what I'll do now is I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Put some stones in place. There's going to be a few stones going in, going out because they're going to have to be pretty much jigsawed puzzled together because we've got to get, I've got to get, the main the main thing is I've got to get access to that sponge at the back. The tube doesn't matter so much because it's very, very finely filtered. We've got top and bottom. We can also blow it through or blow it through for the bottom, taking the pump off later on. To clean that through but that back tube is really really going to need it if not not need cleaning out at all because um that sponge filter is so fine no sediment's going to build up in that tube whatsoever Every, anything that's small is going to blow up through there and um, and and be pushed back out into the tank again any bits of algae and things and then the sponge filter will then in turn take that out on its next pass through the filter so i'll take this piece of wood out now we're going to aquascape this with some dragon stone and we're going to uh, Try and make a nice little show for you guys out of it, okay? Okay guys, there you go, we've put some of the substrate in, we've got the JBL Trushed Lava Stone on the base there, which I find fantastic for uh, colonisation of bacteria. We've got now our little ramp there coming down onto the stones. I've got one stone here on the side, which I can take out, and I can reach behind there and take that sponge filter out, which is just what I was after there. I've just put a pothos plant in there, just to have a look just to see what it's going to look like and I've got some various other plants around here now what I'm going to do is put some ivy up there I've got lots of different plants as you can see up underneath the grow light there 
on the top of the tank. We've got some little spider plants, we've got some little succulent, we've got some mind your own business, I think it's called. Two different types are there under the light. We've got one variegated type or lime, sort of light, limey green colour and one dark colour green. I picked up these from my local garden centre. We've got little spider plants there, tiny little things. Now what I do is I take them out of the pot, I'll show you in a minute. These are the ones that Barry sent me, look, some little ferns, they're going to go well. And two of these little succulent things, I'm not actually sure what they're called to be honest because there's no name on them. So, uh, But as he said, they've got a very, very small root um, structure and they don't need a great deal of moisture. I mean in the winter these sort of plants, you don't water them at all, you can let them go bone dry. I've also got some uh, some of these guys, beautiful red plants, these are little house plants which are going to go well. Two different varieties of those. No names again. I've got some ivy, which is going to look nice trailing down, some nice variegated ivy. And I've got a little umbrella plant there as well, which is um, pretty funky. I think it's an umbrella plant. Oh my god, don't ask me to pronounce that. And these are the other ones that we've got. These are the small creeping. These are the small creeping plants. And that's the name of those. And we've got another massive chunk of it up here, which is a lighter, more variegated type as well. I bought a lot of this because I can put it outside in my garden as well. And that's the name of that one. In case you guys want to ever replicate any of this stuff. We've got a little nice little selection of plants there. And it all came to about 10 quid. About £10 it cost for all those. They're a pound each. Up to £2. I think these were, that was 3 50 That was the most expensive one. The Helixine. Helixine, whatever it's called. Hylazine. God knows, I wasn't pro I wasn't very, never was very good at pronouncing Latin names. I'm honest. There you go. Anyway, there's a nice little selection of plants there that we can put in. Only little clumps, but what I tend to do, and what I've done in the past, I'll just reset you up again, is now I'm still waiting for the light to come for this, but I thought I could just push things along. We can plant it all up. And then all it is, is a matter of fixing the light in the top there, which is a very straightforward mission when uh, when the light arrives, which could be today. You never know with the post. So we've got all these nice little plants to go in. And we've got loads of extra ones to do other projects with. Um, I'll go and grab myself some supplies from the kitchen. Right. What we've got... Barry's also, he also sent me up this nice little bag of sphagnum moss. Now, obviously we can't, we can use some of the ground on the roots. Look, I've just pushed this, I've just taken the spider plant out now. And I can take a lot of the, a lot of that peat off, bang some of it off. But then what I'll do, just snip off some of these lower leaves, some of the ones that are rotting off and not is in good condition. Then we can push some sphagnum moss down in amongst the rocks work here and then put the plants in on top and surround them with sphagnum moss. Now that will keep it nice and moist. It's going to be obviously a moist environment there because it's going to be full of water up to so high, just up to here. So it'll act like a wick so it'll suck up the moisture and when we feed the tank, the feed that's going to be coming from the waterfall coming down everywhere is going to soak into everything around it and so that's going to keep our plants fed every time we um, we feed the, the plants, the little underwater plants, I'll put some in here as well so as we're feeding those it's going to cascade down and also feed those as well so I think what we'll do is we'll get a couple of bits of these moss the only side I've got this stone here obviously I can't touch because this is the one I've got to remove to clean that filter out later on but well, we can take some of this sphagnum moss and we can just poke it to stop any of the earth or bits coming.
getting sucked down into that filter. Some of this is going to be just touching the water, but most of it is going to be outside. And we're just blocking up little holes really. Chuck a bit more up there. And what I've also got is some black aquarium silicone. Now what I'm going to do is up on the Just turn that, get that central. I'm going to cover some of this with um, with some of the black silicone that I've got, and then I'm going to place little bits of stone in amongst it as well, so we can camouflage that up. And some of the plants are going to cover that as well, so it's going to look like the the water's coming out from underneath. These are great fun. These are guys to make. They really are. And you don't have to have a, a round tank like I've made here. You can use a normal, a normal aquarium. You can just have the things coming out above. the branches coming out. We can have some different plants, bromeliads, things like that of that nature that don't need a great deal of water. Like the moisture. Even orchids, things like that I've seen being used. They're quite, uh, quite effective. And this sphagnum moss is going to really help keep that moisture in amongst everything. And then what I'll do is I'll make up a bottle of feed and I'll spray that in through here all over the plants and the leaves which will fertilise the leaves as well. Just creating little environments, it's great fun. Okay, I think we've got enough there to make a start. Now we don't want to be putting these plants directly into the water, into the roots directly into the water because that's going to rot them otherwise you're going to have trouble there. Because most of these are going to be, well most of my little house plants, apart from, uh, I think it's where the mind your own business is called. I think that's enough of that for there. Well, I'm going to speed things up again and I'll get back to you in a second, guys. Okay guys, there you go, we've planted it all up, I've added some sabuaza tang on the bottom as well, some little dwarf sages from one of the other tanks, a nice little bit of pothos there, and we've got, I've managed to hide the, the blade, I'll just poke it in with the scissors, you might be able to see a bit easier, you can just see the lip of the blade there, now the water's going to cascade down there now, and look quite nice, and we're going to, it's going to hit the, and hopefully run down under there. Now we're going to have to give this a couple of initial fills just to spray it and get all that debris through which is going to get washed through from when the pump starts up but then we can just drain it off, refill it. But it's looking pretty funky so far. I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set it up 
where I want to set it up and um, and fill it up. Now, what I was going to say, guys, you're probably thinking, where's the heater going to go? Or where is it? What I've got inside is I've got a reptile heat mat. And with these little size tanks, they're perfect if you sit them on the reptile heat mat with a habistat on and you can get the correct temperature you want that way. And that rising heat then will come through the water. And it's a very effective way of warming a small aquarium up where you haven't got the uh, the room to stick things like the heaters and all that carry on. So um, that's a good little idea for you there if you ever want to make one of these things. Right, let's set this guy up and pull him up some water. Okay guys, there you go. Full of water. Lovely and clear. Give it a couple of initial fills first to, uh, to clear some of that debris away. We've got the waterfall going now at the back. I'll give you a close up of that in a minute and how that's working. As you can see underneath the ivy there, if I just lift that up, I've siliconed some bits of dragonstone onto the uh, onto that little that little ramp we had there going up. So now it's cascading down over there, touching the plants and just having a nice little effect. Really quiet as well, which is nice. That pump's hidden right the way out the back. And it's filtering absolutely magically, really doing well. The plants are going to settle in over time. You might you might find because the roots have been upset when you first do these kind of things that you know, like when you plant anything in your garden, maybe you know tomatoes or you've transplanted something, you're going to get a little bit of wheat first before those roots start to uh, get in amongst everything, as they will. They'll work their way all the way through that sphagnum moss and probably end up going into the water at the back at some stage in a month's time or so but then those leaves will perk up again you get new growth and like I said if you fill up a small bottle like I've got I've got one of these from my local pet store which is obviously non-toxic and everything so you can mix everything up in there some nice fertilizer that you normal normal fertilizer that you can put into to do the base plants like the little sub wazatang and the um, dwarf sage in there when we feed those, now that is going to be in the water, it's going to get sucked through the filter now, that feed's going to go through there, be sucked in amongst that sphagnum moss, and it's going to feed the top plants as well, so everything's going to get a nice feed, and we can also additionally feed by mixing some up in here, and just going in like that, and just wetting things down, just to make sure they're nice and damp still, we'll do it once a day, that's what I've done in the past, and it works nice and well, I think we're going to put some shrimp in here, I put so much in here that um, we haven't got masses of room left, but we got lots of nooks and crannies around the back and places where the where the shrimp can go and hide. I think we'll either I'll either put some uh, yellow sakuras in here or some. Uh, I think the yellow sakuras will look nice actually with that dark substrate, that crushed volcanic rock, and the and the green and yellow go quite well together. So they'll quite they'll pop out quite well the colours in there. And I've got uh, quite a few of those little chaps running around, so I think we'll put some of those in there when it's uh, cycled through. All the log and everything was from a previous system, so that's going to be nicely colonised with bacteria, which is going to help cycle it a bit quicker. The substrate wasn't... that no, that wasn't cycled, the substrate, so that's all new, as obviously the stones weren't either. But we've got a good head start there. Within a couple of weeks, two to three weeks' time, we can... Um, we can stock that with some shrimp, which is going to be interesting. Now, I haven't got the light in there at the top at the moment, so I've got a little torch just down here, just so you can see it glowing in my hand, just to give you a little bit of a bit more light so you can see in there. I'll just zoom you in now on the on that little waterfall there. There you go, there's a better view of that waterfall now. You can see when the light goes in, obviously, it's going to look a lot better, and we're going to have a multicolour. It's going to be on a remote control so we can change the colours, which is going to be really nice. But that's cascading down there, lovely. It looks really natural. And we're going to have a, a thriving little uh, community of shrimp in there. Little snails can go walk about up in the uh, up in amongst the waterfall there. I'm definitely going to have to get back into my dart frogs, I think, and uh, make a couple of these up, maybe a little bit bigger. And just do a little stream like that obviously not the, the amount of water that's in the base like this one's got but we can have a little pool down below plenty of little hiding places for them and get breeding some little dart frogs again because uh, they'll look absolutely fantastic in there and like one of you guys said put the door at the side 
or maybe even a, a hatch at the top with a smaller LED system in there and a little fogger would look absolutely fabulous in there. Right guys, what I've got, I've made one of the um, my snail slash shrimp uh, traps there with my little logo lasered on the side there thanks to my little machine which I am totally in love with over there and um, I'm going to be putting that one on eBay this evening at some point I'll put the um, the item number in the description and um, if you fancy having a bid on that you can go for it because it's only going to start a 99p bid starting bid and whoever wants it just have a bid and uh, last one I don't know I think went, went for about £20 I think I was absolutely stoked with that really over the moon that it went for that much and thank you very much that was Anita that bought that and um, hope it's catching you all your shrimps and your snails and things like that in your aquarium thanks very much for that but that's going to be up for grabs this evening now another thing what I was going to do as well yep another thing that I'm going to do for you guys as well because you uh, you're all good to me with your uh, with your lovely comments and everything I've got another lovely piece of tubing up here which is 300 it's a lovely big piece and I'm going to give that away to one of you guys when we hit 6,000 subs okay I'll send it to you courtesy of wherever you are doesn't make any difference at all I'll box it up and get it posted to you because I'd love to see one of you guys make one of these and put it on here so I can see what a job you do so um, that's going to go out to one of you guys when we hit 6,000 subs okay and I've also got something else which might interest you guys is look at the size of that that is the biggest bit of tube that I've ever come across it's nearly 750 mil wide and um, it's a monster and I can just see jellyfish tank written all over that so um, that could be coming up very shortly as a new build but I've got to source some 10 mil um, flat sheets obviously to go on either side so we can make something really nice out of that big chunk there so that's an exciting build coming up if you're interested in these uh, in these big round tanks but um, like I said guys 6,000 subs that's going to be one of yours see what you can make you can make whatever you like out of it and um, getting back into there this one's nearly finished apart from the light anyway if you're new to my mad channel Go back and have a look at some of the other videos that I've done. It may encourage you to subscribe to the channel and hit the old notification bell. i got one up here. See, look at that. Nice little bell. Hit that notification bell for up and coming videos and um, you won't miss anything. And you'll be kept in the loop with everything that's new and coming up on the channel, okay? And as always, you're all stars. Love you loads. Be safe. Take care. And I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Yeah, I like that. Just me and my guitar